How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you for taking the time. It was a pleasure to virtually meet you. You too. Um, first, uh, I want I, before we start anything, I have to say um, I want to talk about some of the new projects you're working on right now. However, I have to say first up, my one of my favorite movies when I was younger is House Two. Oh yes. Absolutely That's loved House Two. I just want to throw that out there. It's absurd. Uh, you you leave the film before it gets really absurd, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I just I just love the heck out of that movie. So um, I just want it was to so that. much fun. And House One was like one of my favorites. So getting to read for House Two was sure. like yay. Um, you were. I'd like to go back to uh, Friday the Thirteenth. You were suddenly starring in. Uh, the seventh film of a franchise that was pretty hot. Yeah. Um, and now you're suddenly front and center. Um, what was that experience like for you uh, going, into, going into that? Were you oh. aware of how much, how much <laughs> the eyes would be on you? Yes and no at the same time. I, was, I loved the series, um, you know, part one and two were the best drive-in movies ever, right? <laughs> and I loved them. And so when I got the call to read for this one, we didn't know it was Friday the 13th. At first they had a fake name. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they called it Birthday Bash and all the names were changed. And uh, I got a call back and started putting it together. I'm like, wait a minute, is this Friday the 13th? And then I was really excited. Were you, um, so what, was there any kind of pressure for you going into that? I mean, at that point, you're aware of, of the, the franchise in history now. Were you, were, you, um, were you concerned at all? Like, I don't know if I got the goods with this. Well, always a little concerned because I was playing a character that took the series in a different direction. Right. With the psychic, telekinetic stuff. And um, Jason doesn't get her. She doesn't run from him, right? <laughs> so, but once we were filming it was all consuming every day so much to get that shot that I didn't think about it again until I saw the poster on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Half my face. And then I went, oh, <laughs> thanks. What was, the, what was the fan reaction for you? I mean, back then, I think access to fans isn't what it is now. Right. Uh, but no, what so was <laughs> Instead of being virtual, they just showed up. <laughs> so, they could really chase you down the street, right. not a virtual street. So um, I, I got a great reaction. People loved it. They had a lot of fun with it. So, you know, that was, that was just one of those fun little breaks you get as an actor. And, and surprisingly, it continued. So I'm all for fun and entertaining. So I like it. I'm curious what the, um, what the uh, social... Uh, situation was like in Hollywood during your Knott's Landing uh, time, because I feel that that was kind of the beginning of tabloid, uh, of the, the tabloid magazines, and you were on a, your fair care of, you know, your fair share of, of covers, usually, you know, fashion and beauty, but right, I'm just right. curious as to how that, that aspect of, of Hollywood treated you. Well, it, it really was, it really was interesting. I remember at one time, one week, I was on the, the, uh, worst dress list ever <laughs> what i thought was a gorgeous dress and the next oh. week i was the best dress compared to grace kelly and i'm like oh, okay i'm not ever looking at these again and i didn't after that i'm like i'm done so that was an interesting thing for a young actress to kind of fall into that and um you know people were more forward or they may still be the same now but because of social media people feel close but they're not in your immediate circle right. and then people would be right there, you know, wherever you would appear. So it was a different time than our new younger actors have today. Do you think it's beneficial or do you think it's, uh, it was, do you think it's, who do you think had better? Do you think you have it better or do you think some of your, your younger? I think I definitely had it better. I gotta say, um, running the social media machine is tough work. It is, it <laughs> definitely is. So overall, I think I had it better. I did have a few, um, because my character was so, horrible and manipulative right. and <laughs> fabulous to play. Did that, did that bleed over to how the, their fans perception of you? Yes, it, it did. You would get, well, you would get some fans that maybe were just a, uh, a little off in their reality perception and they, they right. would get a little angry. <laughs> no, not me. Her. Well, I mean, I, I would imagine just having a, a fairly nine to five job has got to be reassuring as an actor. I mean, it's, I mean, granted it was, a, I mean, it was a, it was a, a nighttime soap opera. So, Job security isn't 100%, but it's, you're, 
at least you're good for a season usually. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I was only brought on for two episodes in the beginning. And uh, then um, less than a year later, I was brought back and, and I was let go twice and brought back twice. So, and, and I played two characters. Right. So I was very grateful that it kept continuing. <laughs> um, you were... A couple, you have a couple projects coming up which are super, super interesting. Uh, a 13 fanboy uh, looks like a, a blast, first of all. Yes. It's a, just, you've just gathered a, a, a lot of really, really fun actors and what looks like a pretty fun story. It was super, it was a super fun story. It was a very dark, interesting story um, that Deborah, who was, who was the writer and director, had put together. And it, it's about a fan stalker who goes after the actors who play characters. So we are, you know, fictionalized, exaggerated right. versions of ourselves, right? And um, and I'd had a, a real stalker for quite a while, for a good six year period. Wow. And it was, you know, complicated. I mean, it was moving places and trying to get my family away from this person. And it's just a really long drawn out process. So this was kind of a way to turn the tables a little bit. And, um, and she having been an actress really, I know, gave my character the ability to do some dark moments which all actors love to do so <laughs> um there's a lot of cj graham is in this who uh -huh. played jason and yeah. your pre the previous film uh that you were in i i had a, the um the pleasure of moderating his q a a few years ago at a con oh. Uh, oh. which was nice it, it was a really really nice guy he, he was yeah. super sweet too my son uh my, who was at the time i think eight maybe had come to the q a because he wanted to see you know daddy work and uh, so CJ was very adamant that he got a picture with him and it was talking with him. He was a very, very sweet man. That, yeah, he is very sweet. And his wife is really lovely too. Yeah. So they're, they're a great uh, family. And they had worked with the same team of people doing a Vengeance, which was a fan film before I did Upcoming Roseblood. Mm -hmm. And I called them to be sure the production team was great and all of that got some great, you know, um, great advice from them. So yeah, I would consider them good friends. Um, Autumn Road? Yeah. Another film coming out, Laurel A. Linkletter, who I've had the pleasure of speaking with in the past oh, yeah. as well. You know, she's an artist also. She's a very good artist, yes. Incredible artist, yeah. Really good young actress. And uh, she plays a daughter that I'm estranged from. And uh, I really wanted this role. I, I went after this role, a uh, small indie film shot in Denton, Texas, and got to play a character that uh, didn't resemble me at all. Very bitter, angry, sad woman. And I was really excited to play that <laughs> with no glam. <laughs> what, which leads me to another question. What kind of, what are you looking for in a role now versus say what you were looking for earlier in your career? Oh, that's, that's an interesting question. Thank you. Um, well, you know, I, I really do love playing the, the villains, the, the kind of the psychological manipulative characters. And, and I think as you get older, those can be even more interesting, you know, so I, I do like that kind of character. Um, I'm kind of like a walking Lucille Ball. I, you know, I just, I always say walls just jump in front of me and I run <laughs> into them. So I, I wouldn't mind doing some physical comedy, actually. I think that might be fun. Do you, has your approach to the, to the craft changed at all? Is how you, how you prepare and how you study your lines? How is it, has it changed in, have you matured in, in how you approach the, each project? I think so, of course. Um, you, know, you know, I do have an acting school, so I've developed right. a very specific way of teaching actors how to prepare for a role and how to prepare for doing a role where you're in a lot of the scenes, where you have to prepare more than an audition. You know, you have to prepare and hopefully give, hopefully, as I've matured and seasoned, I can add more levels to the characters and, and find more in them. As you grow, hopefully, you can do that, you know, not... You're not just on the surface level. Sure. Uh, you mentioned your acting um, coaching. Um, I'm curious, you're, uh, you do a lot of audition coaching. Yes. Auditioning is interesting to me because I would say most actors say they do not audition well. Yet that's, it is such a huge part of the industry. Um, it, it is it. You know, <laughs> what was the, um, what do you think the challenges are for actors going into an audition? How is that process? Why is it so problematic for a lot of actors? Daunting. I, I think that it's really nerves and it comes from um, a feeling of, I don't know what they want. I don't know if I'm right. 
I don't know if I'm reading the script the way they want it. So I spend a lot of time working with actors on, you know, if they've called you in, they're interested, right? You can right. put some of those nerves away. And if you're really prepared and you know how to, to work a script so that you can take their notes and change it immediately for them and they can see different ways, you'll be much more confident and calm than the terrifying nurse. But of course, you know, today our auditions are self-tapes. Right. Which been a challenge because if you don't know tech and you just came into the pandemic knowing nothing about shooting and now that's what you do all day that can be challenging do you think there's an advantage to that though without i, I feel there might be a little less pressure at least yes yes i think there's a great advantage you could do multiple takes of course right um you can do that i i think the nerves from self-taping come from how do i get this loaded into the right size technical things that maybe right. people aren't used to doing but um you know you can do it on do it on your iphone you can upload things so quickly now and you know these kids even the adults they're not driving the two and a half hours a day we did in la in the day driving right to every audition so they have no excuse to be late i'm like oh no i'm not hearing that you know and they're they're not also using maps <laughs> the, the the little box tells them how to get somewhere right. they're not looking up a map while they're driving so they've got some definite um easier routes than we did <laughs> what do you think is the biggest mistake uh, uh actors make going into an audition biggest mistake they make up uh, being not being prepared enough yeah yeah just really uh, thinking the scene is one way and not digging into it enough before they go in. Yeah. Would you say that actors, I, I feel as if the, an actor will, um, they always have an idea of what they want going into, going to audition, like what they think, the, what they think the role is calling for. Yes. Um, do you have any uh, advice for actors who, um, I don't know, maybe feel that they, they are, are, are not approaching the role correctly going into audition? Yes, yes. Um, actually, that, that's a lesson I love to teach so much. And um, I have the actors create two very specific ways to do that role. So, so when, they, when they rehearse it that way, then they can get a little piece of direction and they're already ready to take their character that way. Because you're not going to find generally, you know, five, ten different ways to do a scene for an audition. You might in class, but usually a film has a certain way it needs to be done. Sure. And you can figure out a couple of really solid ways. Do you act yourself? You've got so many good insights into it. Uh, no, I don't. But thank you. Uh, no? I just, just talk what, about it a lot. <laughs> what about that boy of yours? What's that? No, uh, my, my daughter was very briefly taking an acting class. Um, How old is she? She's 17 now, but oh, wow. cheerleading took over, so. Well, we can, we can fix that. Uh, We're in a cheerleading film. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my, and my son is, has, is devastatingly shy, so I don't think he'll ever be in front of anyone. But, you know, don't you think, I mean, I'm sure you've met a million actors and that their actual life is, is sure. shy and right. very introspective, and then they come out through the writing you know were you what were you like as a as a child were you were you shy or is this something you no. you, you really hope for to be on I, look I, at me <laughs> no I, well i don't even know if it was look at me i was the uh, the baby of an army colonel an army brat and i just had to remake my life all the time moving and i sure. knew i was going to be an actor very young like like eight years old it was cemented in my brain and and i just did couldn't have, I, I just didn't have anything else that I wanted to do at that time. So when you were moving so much, did you, were you, did you see that as an opportunity to become a new person? Yes, I think, I think many, many actors do that, that are, that are moving around. You only have two years in that place. Right. So I know that I would say, okay, how do I get rid of any really bad faults? How do I not talk over someone or have better respect or call my friends? I would think in those terms for right. sure. Yeah. At what point did you know that this was something you could not only that you want to do, but you could earn a living doing? Well, I, I because of the military bases, there there wasn't a lot of acting everywhere we went, but there was modeling. So by the time I was a teenager, I was modeling a lot, and I'm really small, I'm <laughs> barely five four, but I was able to work in modeling and overseas. But my love was always to go into acting, so I did you know theater, and then I guess I just kept going. I just knew that that there was some living to be made um, in the career and been very lucky that that's been true. What was the last job that you had that was not acting? Like what was, was the last, acting. prior to your career launching, were you, were you waiting tables? Were you? Uh... Well, I mean, that's a prerequisite. Right, you know, well, yeah. Table, like... You can't be an actor. <laughs> no. 
Yes, I guess that that would have been been that. Can't imagine. So I ended up, you know, I grew up in open and acting school, so right. even my work is, is still acting. Yeah, I suppose so. Right. I just love, I love the, I love the. Uh, I don't ever have to come back here. Kind of jet stories. Like you know, you finally got your paying. You, you, you know, you got your your paying gig. You're like, I'm not coming back to this place anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Like if you'd worked somewhere and it was horrible right, right yeah. yeah no I, I i used to work several jobs at a time as in you know high school cocktail and waitressing chili's restaurant i was worked in the very first one ever made ever built oh wow yeah seriously. that's a feather your cap huh? i can uh, <laughs> tell you what's on an old timer right <laughs> um well first thank you so much for taking time to talk uh with me uh actors audition studios is uh, the website um yes. follow you on facebook as well Yes, um, my name and Instagram, my name. Instagram uh, and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you very I'm much. I'm with you about you and your family. Well, thank you. <laughs> Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.